Hello, my lovelies. Welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you tarot and witchcraft is what I do. Here we are entering new year 2023. And I wanted to bring to you guys uh, the finale of the year video. As you guys know, I've been doing this for the past four years. When we look into astrologically the changes, uh, what is unfolding, what is going to or what can you expect for the new year. Um, so that is exactly what this video is. We're going to not only look into the cards, but we're also going to look astrologically at um, the celestial events that are going to be happening for every single one of these signs, as well as uh, major impacts or influences uh, that will therefore manifest certain things in your life for the coming 2023. So welcome. If you're new to my channel, definitely hit that like button, subscribe so you get the newest updates or newest videos going up. And let's begin with the nitty greedy. Now I am not here uh, to scare or worry, uh, but 2023, when looking into this year, um, a few things. Now, like I said, we're not going to focus primarily on like uh, the difficulties. I am a huge believer that the energy that we put out is exactly what we attract. So we're going to go into 2023 being optimistic and being positive, putting your intentions, your goals, your desires and aspirations, um, because ultimately at the end of the day, we are the ones that create our own destiny. So uh, with that being said, <laughs> um, let's get into it. So when we talk about the year 2023, in numerology, this is number seven. And as you guys know, number seven is a very spiritual number. Um, it is about uh, not only awakenings, but it is about finding the drive, the force, um, the meaning of, of life and of connecting uh, synchronizations and understanding um or the receiving of understanding of spiritual downloads. That is definitely what a lot of people are experiencing already. They have been the past two, three years. Um, but more than that, we do see that there's going to be um, still difficulty in the Middle East, as well as with uh, China, as well with Korea. Um, and these are going to be uh, issues that become um, worldwide, right? Um, that you guys will be hearing about in 2023. It's almost like the climate is escalating at some point. Um, there is a major desire for um, power when we talk about, you know, countries, especially those countries. Um, so I don't think that that's going to change. Obviously we've been experiencing that oh, 2022, um, war being thrown out, uh, multiple times. Um, now when we talk about natural disasters, uh, climate, you know, change is something that was very prominent when looking into 2023. So I feel like you know, these uh, crazy heat waves as well as the crazy winter, right, um, is going to continue escalating. It's going to continue um, just, you know, Mother Nature um, being upset that we're not really taking care of her. And um, a lot of I don't want to say disasters, but um, Mother Nature basically taking its course. And I do see that continuing on uh, throughout 2023. Now, when we talk about um, 
health, right? And the pandemic, something that um, many people on my Instagram were wanting me to look into. That's where a lot of red flags came up. Um, and the reason for this is because 2023, we're still going to be experiencing that of COVID. Um, I think it's already rising. Um, but with that, um, we also, we also seen other issues that may come up health wise, um, where we kind of go into this gray area. Um, and the reason I say that is because Saturn has been in, uh, Saturn has been in Aquarius and obviously when, you know, when the pandemic and everything started happening, you know, Saturn is restrictions and, uh, the lockdown and stuff like that. Um, but we have Saturn going into Pisces. And what this means is that, you know, Pisces rules over water. So we're talking about, you know, we're talking about things that have to do with the blood, that has to do with liquid in our body, um, we're talking about, and also, you know, with the energy of, with the energy of Neptune, um, a lot of 2023, um, I, I'm not here to try to, you know, scare people or, <laughs> or to worry them. The best advice I can say when we're talking about health related issues for 2023 is try the best you possibly can to keep your immune system up, to really try the best you can to consume herbal teas, anything that is grown. Um, and of course, you know, anything that you can implement that would give you the, the vitamins and the strength to or, or that has um or can help your immune system um and the reason i'm saying this is because i was also shown health issues where doctors will get to a point of not really understanding or knowing how to detect some type of some type of like health issue um, and again, remember Saturn is going into Pisces. So it's about kind of the situation when you go to a doctor and you're trying to figure out what's wrong with you and no one really has answers, that type of thing that could go undetected for a while because they don't really necessarily know themselves. Um, so again, like I said, I would highly encourage you guys to do what you have to do to strengthen your immune system to you to your kids uh, to your loved ones um you know that of we are already experiencing people just you know uh falling over and dying that's something that is actually happening already and it has been happening for a while and um it has everything to do with the pandemic and what is in the air. So like I said, um, word of advice, strengthen your immune system. Um, try the best you can not to really push your limits health wise when we're talking about, uh, this year, I feel like progressively the year as it goes on, it will get better. Um, when we're talking about finances, when we're talking about real estate, when we're talking about um, the economy, uh, from now all the way to, I want to say May, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of changes surrounding the economy. Um, unfortunately, I see, you know, many people um, 
losing their jobs, companies going, you know, um, bankrupt or closing. Um, I think that if anything from this pandemic, what we've learned is that sometimes what you think is structured or what you think is, you know, concrete is not always concrete. And in a matter of seconds, everything can crumble. And we have to be prepared for not relying solely on, you know, what we think is reliable. Like an example, your job, your nine to five job. Um, I think that the year since 2020, um, it's shown us that we have to, we as humanity, as society needs to adapt to circumstances and situations. And like I said, if anything, I've seen even with consulting with my clients, there was a major growth for people starting their own businesses. And I think that that is marvelous. I think that that is beautiful. I think that if we had had that reset um, when we experienced all this craziness of the pandemic, um, many people would have never actually dared or put themselves out there to actually try. Um, so what I'm seeing for 2023 is, yes, the very beginning is going to be extremely rocky and it's going to be hard for many. Um, but as we progress into the summer days, uh, things will progressively start to get better. Um, people become much more stronger um, health wise. Um, for a lot of you guys, maybe you are even now experiencing uh, back pains, headaches, um, your neck area hurting. Um, this is I can personally attest. I, you know, when I started looking into this, was the middle of December and I started to experience all these signs um, and these were the signs that spirit was telling me uh, if you are experiencing that uh, just know and understand that you are going or in essence jumping um, ahead in your timeline um, why because you are uh, part of what our society and our humanity needs right now. So those that are awakened are being pushed to have major spiritual downloads uh, right now. And you don't, if you are experiencing that, there are certain things that you need to release and, and you don't want to bring that energy to 2023. So what I'm saying is if you're experiencing that um, headaches, backaches, even in your neck area. Um, this is just, you know, understand and know that you are experiencing, uh, whether you're aware of it or not, spiritual downloads. And uh, this is what, you know, our spiritual army is uh, helping us in this process because we, <coughs> excuse me, we need to, become more aware of the energies around us. Um, so again, if you are experiencing this, this is a very positive thing. Um, if you don't know how to deal with it, it's probably negative. You're probably complaining about it, but just know that there is a higher purpose for this um, and it will the pressure will start to come off uh, once we kick in the new year. So again, like I said, I am not here to put fear in you guys just be mindful and understand the economy is going to go to shit um the beginning of the year um even in real estate um many companies will be uh closing their business or not being able to maintain the business um economy is something major that is already happening it's already you know i'm sure you've noticed people you know at the stores and stuff claiming that they don't have change uh they're trying to get uh coins out of the out of the streets basically <laughs> um there is major changes that are coming and like i said i think that it is um important 
um, to be aware, to be aware more than anything. And like I said, things will progressively start to get better in the middle of the year. Um, I think 2024 is going to be much more um, progressive and we'll find uh, more opportunities um, becoming stronger as a society. Um, but of course, it's kind of like they say, um, it gets worse before it gets better. So with that, um, like I said, strengthen your immune system, take your vitamins, guys, um, really don't expose yourself unnecessarily, um, continue to wear masks. There is this cough that's going around. Um, I also looked into that and I think that it has a lot to do with um, the debilitation that our body took uh, when we were experiencing the pandemic. Even people that came back from that um, have issues with their breathing. Um, so, you know, drinking um, sea moss, that's something that I uh, personally ha have been um, preparing and selling for the past two years. Um, and every time I do batches, it just goes away, right? I sell out right away uh, for the same reason. Um, do anything you possibly can to cleanse your lungs, to remove the mucus in your body. Um, and, and like I said, herbal teas and stuff like that, that really help uh, because that will definitely be necessary and needed, um, not just to us, but for our kids and for the kids of their kids. Um, there is a major decline in procreation as well. Um, and with this, you know, virus that we experienced um, and the things that went into our body, you know, with the vaccines and all of that, there is going to be consequences to that. Maybe not to us, but to our children and the children of our children. So again, um, I'm not here to put fear in you. I'm, I'm here to give you the knowledge, um, the understanding, and to give you guys the uh, tools and the awareness of what is necessary for us to protect ourselves because clearly the people we've relied on up until now have majorly uh, failed us, right? Um, so... With that being said, try the best you can to strengthen your immune system. Go the natural route. Uh, medicine and stuff like that, uh, everything you find in the stores, all of that is processed. Try to go as natural as possible um, so that you can really reap the benefits of of the herbal teas, of um, the juicing, stuff like that, that is going to help strengthen um, our bodies. So, all right, now let's get into, let's get into the signs and what you can expect. We're going to start off here with, <clears throat> we're going to start off here with Aries. I'm going to be reading off of notes because it was a lot of information. Um, all right, so we're starting off with Aries. Aries, this is going to be a huge year for you when it comes to love and romance uh, for you guys. We will have Jupiter and Aries in your first house for about five months into the year and midway through the year um, of 2023. Um, the North Node will be going into your sign of Aries, which means that the South Node will be in the sign of Libra, your seventh house, and Venus will be in the sign of Leo, which is your fifth house. So you basically have a trifecta happening in the beginning of 2023. So your love sector is definitely going to be activated. Jupiter will be in Aries in your first house from December 20th to, or, or it was, from December 20th, 2022, all the way to May 16th, 2023. 
Jupiter, the planet that brings blessings, abundance, and great fortune. Um, as Jupiter activates your first house axis, this is a great time uh, to meet someone or it indicates that you may be proposing to someone or receiving a proposal or an invitation to take things to the next level. For those of you guys that are uh, now casually dating, um, again, it, it's still the same energy of taking it to the next level. Jupiter can indicate liberation or freedom. Um, so for those of you guys that are in an existing relationship um, that just hasn't been working or um, that you've had trouble stabilizing as of now, around this time you may be the protagonist that walks away or ends the connection because it would be uh, transiting your sign. Uh, for those of you guys that are single, connections may happen while you're traveling or you may be taking some time, uh, sorry, some kind of journey. You could meet someone uh, who is a foreigner or a traveling uh, to your country or this person may be very educated, could be very cultured. Uh, you can also meet someone through education, uh, meaning while you're in college or being involved in an educational program. Um this person may be an actual teacher or a coach, a mentor, um, or someone that works through the court system. Uh, they may be a lawyer, a judge, or educated in that sector. Uh, they may also be, uh, on the other spectrum, may be very spiritual. Um, or this person may be a Sagittarius or a Pisces sun, moon, or rising, if we keep it very simplistic, to be honest. Um now the North Node will be in Aries and the South Node will be in Libra, which is your seventh house. Uh, from the 17th of July, 2023 until January, 2025. 19 month transit. This happens once uh, every 19 years, South Node in the seventh house. Uh, for some of you guys, maybe relationship, a connection, uh, severing, a breakup or a separation. Um, now, it can play out many different ways for others. It could be, um, you know, dealing with a situation where your partner is living in a different country or working abroad. Um, South Node in Libra speaks about a soulmate connection, perhaps a person from your past being reunited uh, or the one person you would consider the love of your life, uh, connecting and finding um reconnecting sorry or finding that both of you at this point in time are single um this does indicate or highlight a person that is very spiritually soul tied to you that is extremely spiritual um now you also have a full moon in leo in your fifth house of partnerships this could indicate getting into a relationship rather quickly and there could be some unexpected um, energy. As an example, perhaps uh, you approach the connection as something casual that turns into something more long-term in a very quick um, and short time span. So again, major, major highlights here for you guys uh, for this year of 2023 when we're talking about relationships and partnerships. Now, Let's look into the tarot to see what you can expect for this month of January 2023. And I am also going to be pulling out a few cards here from the Oracle cards, which, as you can see, we have incorporated multiple oracles um, so that we can get a more Concise messages here from Spirit, you guys. All right, let's see what's going on with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of January 2023. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of January 2023. By the way, you guys, um, for those of you guys that are interested in kicking off the new year, we have the uh, new year bonus here. Um, this is a, uh, I completely went blank, you guys. <laughs> this is a 
uh, gift set that we're doing for the new year. It's going rather quickly. Um, we only did 200 of these and I gave my Instagram followers a heads up. Um, now basically bringing it here on YouTube, uh, letting you guys know um, when you purchase this, it comes with the cured and prepared ritualized candle for the new year that is going to bring in uh, health, abundance, and love. And um, also it comes with a money uh, mojo back that we prepared and cured. Um, and also uh, it comes with, or it will come with a soap, whichever we feel more inclined it is. Uh, calling to you and that's the one that we choose it could be from a road opener to a love soap to a money soap and we also uh, with this bundle include the ward protection um, if you guys know about wards then obviously I don't need to explain it to you for those of you guys that are not aware of what wards are wards are something that mostly practitioners um, keep in their altars in their home by their beds um, and these are a mixture of herbs that are protective uh, of our person of our physical spiritual and mental body so that no one may try to do any type of witchery or any envy or any evil eye or anything like that and when you have a ward in place um, the purpose of the ward is to catch uh, and we're not talking about like very simplistic candle. I'm sorry, not candles, not very simplistic um, spells. We're talking about like really um, evil spells that people have a tendency of, especially unhappy people, of doing to other people. And the sole um, work of a ward is basically to protect you and your home. So... Uh, as an example, you can have a ward in place. Happens to me all the time. I always keep about 40 wards um, in place at, at one single time. And every time someone throws something at you, um, the ward catches that until it gets to the point where if, as an example, if you have it in your altar and you have it in place, um, the glass will shatter or it will break. Um, and that just means that that war did exactly what it was supposed to do and it pulled whatever was being thrown at you. Um, but in a physical aspect, it lets you know like, hey, they just broke one of your wards. So it's always important to keep multiple wards um, in place. So anyways, this gift set comes with all of that. It is a mojo bag, um, the candle that is worked, cured, uh, and ritualized. Um, and as you guys know, you know, I don't do, uh, rituals very simplistic. Uh, we do heavy magic, uh, to really empower, um, and give you guys the, you know, so you guys can see the maximum results from that. So yeah, that is the bundle. It is the candle, the soap, the sachet mojo bag, and the war protector, uh, protector. Um, that's one. Now for others of you. Uh, you guys can find all of this in our online stores, you guys. Uh, like I said, we have all of this um, for the new year, um, but it is going quickly. So just word of advice, if you're interested, definitely go on to our online store. You'll be able to find that hopefully um, when you get or when you guys see this video. And we have here the money bags, um, money mojo bags. And for those of you guys that like to gamble, we also have the uh, dollar buck, um, dollar buck mojo bags. Um, like I said, powerful stuff, you guys. Um, and like I said, you guys know, those of you guys that have been following me for a long time, you know that um, I don't do mass production, meaning I don't do over 500 candles at once. I do ritualize and ritual, uh, sorry, ritualize all my products, everything that is on my online store, we prepare it. Um, so like I said, this will go fast, okay? All right, let's get into it. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of January, 2023. Let's see what you can expect. 
Sorry, you guys, if this video seems like all over the place, but we are exhausted. <laughs> we are exhausted. We have been really going through it. <laughs> what we're talking about. <clears throat> wow, you guys have powerful cards here. Okay. All right, Aries, Aids of Wands. Eight of Wands coming in very quickly. Passionate energy, very intense energy. Uh, connection uh, when we're talking about relationships when we're talking about partnering or partnerships there is definitely a elevation um, energy that they're speaking about here there is a lot of healing that's been happening for a lot of you guys um, for some of you guys you already found the person that is going to be very, very prominent for you guys um, and with them uh, healing also begins or almost comes to a culmination um because what i'm seeing here is transformative type of energy i'm seeing being loved in a healthy way uh to the point of understanding that this is what's best for you or you will get to that um sometime in january aries and it is you guys being open and aware of the blessings or counting your blessings that are unfolding for you guys uh definitely very powerful energy here especially with the chariot and the lovers card it's like your world is starting to open up and spirit bringing to you uh the people and circumstances that are necessary in your life at this point in time um with purpose so again People that are coming into your life, Aries, um, at this point in time, uh, it is timing. It is because they're meant to be in your life at this point. And those that are walking out of your life, it is important to not hold on to it, Aries, because there is also a purpose in that um, of releasing them. Okay, so let's get into your Oracle cards, Spirit Guides, Ancestors, Archangels. Give us some oracle cards to represent the messages that you want to communicate to Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for this month of January 2023. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that you want to communicate to Aries at this point in time? Okay, here we go. We're going to start off with diligence. So it is about paying attention. It is about not rushing into things, Aries, for uh, not only January, but for 2023. It is about making wise decisions, decisions that are thought out, decisions that um, you really, you know, are not basing them off of emotion, but more when you're cool headed. Um, it is going to be very important and it's going to be very, you know, uh, necessary for your success for 2023. So again, it is about being diligent. It is about paying attention. Um, it is about making decisions, uh, that are not necessarily ruled or based on your heart, but more so on your mind, um, so it is about disconnecting or um, when we're talking about making decisions um, or making choices or taking choices, it is about what makes sense. <clears throat> now your next card here is flexibility. Important to be open. Um, this could be in every aspect, but I feel like for some of you guys, it could be in the aspect when we're talking about love and romance, perhaps you have a specific type, perhaps in the past, you have a tendency of going for the same type of person. What they're telling you is don't judge a book by its cover. Be open, be flexible. Um, give yourself the opportunity to connect with people on a, uh, deeper level by getting to genuinely getting to know them. Also be flexible about your goals and aspirations. Um, for some of us, it's difficult to let go of control, right? <laughs> Me as a Capricorn, I can definitely attest to that. But sometimes what our vision is for what we want, 
<clears throat> excuse me, we may see it as um, this is how it's supposed to unfold. And sometimes the universe has different plans. And of course, the universe knows better than we do. So as an example, you're trying to uh, get your business off the ground and you think that you always envisioned that the success would come in a certain way, but then that business doesn't work out and you end up or another business falls on your lap and you're kind of hesitant about it. That could be spirit helping you get a business off the ground just because you thought it would come in some other way doesn't mean that it won't happen. You got to be aware of that. All right. And our last Oracle card here is for Chakra Archangel Michael. So protective energy here. Every time I see Archangel Michael, Michael is a warrior. He is a protector. He is, um, he's a very strong and powerful energy, you guys. So um, by him showing up here in this Oracle card uh, is an indication if you feel like you've been struggling or you've been feeling like um, it's been very difficult or for some of you guys even try just trying to hold on, know and understand that you are protected. Know and understand that even when you felt like giving up, the reason why you're still holding on is because you are protected. Archangel Michael is there and as the warrior that he is, he will do everything he needs to do or they need to do uh, to push you in the right direction. Again, be diligent, pay attention. If you have inklings, um, as an example, um, you feel spontaneously that you need to be somewhere or that you need to go somewhere or that you need to play the lotto or that you need to whatever intuitively if you just feel very drawn to something pay very close attention to that and follow it um, because being diligent also indicates being very self-aware of your intuition so with that my lovelies i wish you guys the very best for 2023 may this year bring to you guys all blessings success love and happiness all right let's go to taurus all right, Taurus, let's see what's going on with you guys. I know you're one of the signs that is going to be experiencing major transformation this 2023. Now, Taurus, Saturn has been squaring you um, as a Taurus since the end of 2020. Has put a lot of pressure on Taurus with upholding traditions, commitments, or staying in relationships where you've been potentially putting your head against the wall. Trying really, really hard to fight to keep the relationship going. This will pass after um, the 7th of March in 2023 when Saturn finally leaves Aquarius and enters Pisces. So for those of you guys in a marriage or a committed relationship, by the time you get to March 2023, you'll get clarity about what it is that you want, whether you want to continue or remain with this person. From the 16th of May 2023 to May 24th, 2024, Jupiter will be in Taurus. Not um, not only will Saturn be leaving Aquarius. Um, for those of you guys that are single, you could have made it. Uh, it could have made it very difficult for you guys to date or to find a new person. Jupiter going into your sign will bring blessings and opportunities. This is a twelfth month window, you guys. So you can enter into a new relationship, or if you're dating, take it to the next level. Um, whether this means moving in together, some of you will be getting proposed to or proposing and for others actually getting married. This is one of the most luckiest transits that you can experience. And this only happens once every 12 years. The first two months of 2023 will be the most difficult, whether you're in a committed long-term relationship right now, or for those of you guys that are single to find someone. Um, but things start to progress for the better as we go into March. And the strongest points will be in mid-July 2023 to January 2025. With the North Node in Aries and the South Node in Libra, you will be having a full moon in Virgo at 16 degrees in your fifth house on March 7, 2023. Fifth house, uh, which is connected to dating and romance, activations, uh, we look to the 5th, 7th, and 1st house um, 
when we're talking about love and romance or relationships, partnerships, for those of you guys that have been delaying a breakup with a partner, you may end up deciding to bite the bullet and call it quits once and for all. For those of you guys that have been single for quite a while, this may uh, see these energies may be, may be pushing you forward, jumping into the dating pool. So whether you're in a relationship or for those of you guys that are single and have been single for quite a while, there is definitely major changes in your love life. And 2023 is definitely going to be highlighting romance and exciting new uh, times for you guys. Uh, and like I said, if those of you guys that have been in relationships that just have not been working out around this time, you may be uh, really calling it quits or walking away and finally releasing yourself, um, being able to embrace um being able to embrace finding yourself again um, or all over again, I should say. And those of you guys that have been single, not for long, you guys. So uh, definitely good things coming to you guys for 2023. All right, now let's look into the tarot. Let's see what Taurus can expect for this month of January 2023. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. We have the Page of Pentacles, the Eight of Pentacles, King of Cups, Ten of Pentacles, Nine of Pentacles, and the Page of Wands. So it's working towards, <coughs> excuse me, working towards <coughs> really building the future that you want, Taurus, is what they're saying here. It's about really focusing and honing in on exactly what it is that you want. What is it that you're trying to draw into your life? What is it that you're trying to manifest? What is it that you're working very hard towards? What What's the ultimate goal here? And what they're saying is that you have every possibility for this 2023 to manifest exactly that. But remember, with Jupiter's energy, it is about think big or go home. It is about not being humble about the things that you want. It's about owning it and really knowing that you deserve it. And like I said, thinking big, like what is, if there is a wish that you can, you know, material materialize, manifest at this point right now, what would that wish be? And being clear on that and knowing exactly what it is that you want and knowing and understanding that astrologically, um, the alignments are going to help you to propel you into exactly the path and life you want. It is about really going for it and, you know, shooting for the stars, like, you have the Ten of Pentacles here with the Nine of Pentacles. Abundance is definitely going to be one of the main themes for you guys in 2023. But when we're talking about what you consider sta stability, what you consider um, happiness, what you consider uh, being secure in, what is that? What does it feel to you? That is exactly what you're bringing into 2023. So again, my advice is think big or go home, Taurus. And we don't want to go home. We <laughs> I hope you don't. Trying to manifest shit, make it happen. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Spirit guides, ancestors, archangels. Please give us three cards for Taurus, sun, moon, rising, Venus. What is it that... You want to communicate to them at this point in time. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. You guys are definitely going into a new cycle in your life, Taurus. A lot of things are happening astrologically where, um, like I said, uh, there is definitely opportunities there for abundance. Um, you're one of the signs for 2023 that is really going to be transformative energy. So... Uh, really start 
you know, visualizing, start calling in exactly what it is that you want. Don't don't think that whatever it is that you want is too big or too difficult to actually make happen because the planet alignments are here to assist you and to help you. And they're telling you, think big, Taurus. Think big. All right. Here we go. Your first card here is courage. Courage. It is about believing in yourself. It is about trusting the process. We all know Taurus never lack courage. This is something that is engraved in you. But I feel like they're talking about the courage within yourself. The believe in yourself, Taurus. the courage to walk away from things that are no longer working for you and that you know are hindering your progress or your growth. Maybe habits, habits that you know are a detriment to your self-growth. Now the next card here that we have is stand still. Contemplate. This is almost the energy that I was really sensing when I was looking into the changes that are happening for you, uh, for you, Taurus, was that I really feel like a lot of you guys are going to truly be able to manifest and bring into existence um, through visualization. So now is the time you want to start your vision boards. Now is the time you want to take 20 minutes out of your day um, to meditate and to connect with yourself, to learn, to care and nurture for yourself, to disconnect from the world for at least 20 minutes a day to check on yourself. Now, the next one here is voyage. A lot of traveling for some of you. Um, traveling or meeting people that are from different cultures, different backgrounds, um, People that may be passing by, maybe traveling, that bring to you new experiences. Um, for some of you guys, it could be meeting a person that is a foreigner. That exposes you to a different culture, different foods, different people. That makes you more worldly. Beautiful energy here. And I see the, the contrast, right? from the mountains to the sea, right? The earthly and the spiritual, the physical and the emotional, and stand still, be in between both worlds. This is the potential to manifest what is in your mind into the physical. Through the emotion or the connection of the emotion through visualization. That's exactly what I seen for you guys when I was looking into your sign. So then time to kick off those, kick out, <laughs> dust off those vision boards. Make it happen, Taurus. Beautiful energy, you guys. All right. So now we're going to go with Gemini. So Gemini's uh, Pluto will be entering Aquarius for the first time in nearly 250 years, you guys. This is amazing for Gemini's. Pluto will be uh, training uh training you harmonious aspect here um, that you'll definitely love to experience. Pluto rules over sex and intimacy and Pluto has been in your eighth house, which has been a bit difficult and a bit dark since 2008. So the planet of intimacy and sex finally going into this harmonious energy aspect indicates that you will be seeing emotional intimacy and sex in a completely different way which is definitely going to help you when it comes to evolving uh, 
existing relationships or cultivating your new connections and relationships. Pluto will be in Aquarius in your ninth house um, from March to, uh, 23rd, 2023 to uh, June 11th, 2023, which will go back into the sign of Capricorn, but then uh, it will go back into Aquarius once more in January 2024. Keeping in mind that Pluto has a 20-year cycle, uh, for those of you single, the next person entering your life will have a very special and meaningful connection. And because it will be in the sign of Aquarius, it is highlighted uh, that for many of you, you may be meeting your soulmate. There will be a full moon in Libra at 16 degrees and you're in your fifth house on April 6, 2023. When we're talking about love and romance, we like to see activations in your fifth house, seventh house, as well as your first house. Um, with this occurring in your fifth house and it being a full moon, some of you may be taking a relationship to the next level, or it could be a situation that raises its peak. This is a very emotional full moon as from uh, many of you, you may be dealing with some type of emotional trauma, healing uh, beyond past circumstances. Venus will be in Gemini in your fifth house on April 11th through the 7th of May, 2023. Obviously activating your first house, Venus... Um, Venus uh, over the seventh house and with it being in your first house, you're definitely going to be feeling more attractive, more flirty, more than one option for you guys in matters of love and dating perspectives. Now, I do want to say, I think that um, Gemini's have been having a bit of a difficult um, time when we're talking about relationships and partnerships. Um, and that's definitely going to be changing for 2023. Like I said, Pluto is definitely a very uh, powerful uh, planet. And it is a very slow moving planet as well. So again, major transformation there, being able to see things from a dif different perspective. And for a lot of you guys, healing. And I think that, you know, as a spiritual advisor you know i deal with many clients from all over the world and you know i do see that many gemini's have been going through this almost this healing energy um this deciding to release or let go of people that though we may love are very toxic and this is beautiful i love to see this because you are learning about your worthiness and what you bring to the table and and knowing when it's time to tell someone that is just taking from your table, it's time to you. It's time for you to get up and you get the fuck out of my table. Um, so again, very transformative energy here for you, Gemini. So beautiful. Um, all right, let's see what you can expect for January twenty twenty three. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I was trying to make these videos short. As always, you guys know that is impossible <laughs> for me. Too much information. So <laughs> we're not trying to rush, right? We're not trying to go into... <coughs> 2023 feeling rushed <clears throat> all right so we have here the nine of swords <clears throat> frustration difficulty when we're talking about love and romance for some of you guys they could have been an ending of a relationship or getting to the point of understanding that it's best to walk away or cut your losses you do have the two of cups here with the nine of cups so there is almost the feeling of unfulfilled wishes or desires or perhaps uh, like I said holding on to hope or wanting to hold on to hope but at this point you understand that the more you give the more they take so it's it's not really clicking for them they're not really understanding that sometimes Gemini's deserve to be taken care of sometimes Gemini's deserve to be given instead of being the one to give um and with this heartbreaker, with this 
heart truth that you're realizing you're also understanding what you deserve gemini you're understanding your worth and what you bring to the table and you're understanding that there is no point in holding on to what doesn't want to be held to so what i'm seeing here is what you may feel or find that is breaking off or that is coming to an end or connections relationships uh, that are becoming severed um, you're understanding that your peace tranquility and peace of mind is much more of value to you than the love you may have for these people that are toxic and this is including relationships partnerships friendships family members even um but there's this awareness that's happening so again for a lot of you guys it is about recognizing what you deserve recognizing um what you give what you bring to the table and and not apologizing for it no more but also not allowing others to take that for granted beautiful energy Gemini's. All right, let's see what oracle messages you guys have here. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels. What are the messages here that you want to communicate to Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus at this point in time? What is it that they need to know? What is it that they need to know? All right, so we are door to spirit, connecting with your spirituality, Gemini, um, listening to synchronizations, paying attention to the signs that spirit is giving to you. Uh, as an example, for some of you guys, you may be experiencing, you know, a difficult situation with a partnership and maybe not feeling like you don't know what to do, if you should continue or if you should walk away. You sit there and ask spirit um, or God or, or whatever it is you believe in to give you wisdom, to give you a message. Um, and then you're driving, right? And then you see the sign that says stop. Um, and you don't think much of it. And then you continue on. Pay attention is what they're telling you. Pay attention. Now, your next card here is taking risks. I feel that for a lot of you guys, sometimes the feeling of not wanting to walk away or not wanting to disconnect from, you know, people or situations. Um, it's more scary to not know what may happen. So sometimes comfortability or what what feels normal to us is safer than what we don't know is out there. Um, the best way of describing it is kind of like when you are in a toxic relationship and you know it's toxic and you're aware of it, but then you sit there and you think, well, you know, I know this devil. I'm not going to know the next person that comes along. So you'd rather put up with all the shit because you're already used to that. What Spirit is saying is, no, 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 it's time for you to take risks. It's time for you to really put yourself out there. Um, it's time for you to make a new path, to make a new life, to make a new version of yourself. Life is about reinventing ourselves, Gemini. Now, your next card here is, whoops, I pulled out two. Very soon, clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. I feel for some of you guys, this is a love situation. For others of you, this could be just life in general. Stop being so scared. Maybe you've grown accustomed to just being at home. Not really pushing the boundaries like you did a few years ago. Maybe there's fear of change. But then you sit there and complain that things are not really moving 
It's time to shake that energy out, Gemini. Take risks. Pay attention to the signs. Be clear on what it is that you want. All right, my lovelies. All right. I want to wish you guys the very best and happy new year. Let's go now to Cancer. All right. All right, Cancers, Saturn will be changing signs going into Pisces, your ninth house, on March 7th, 2023 to February 13th, 2026, for the first time in nearly three decades. Why is this so important for you guys? Because from a romantic perspective, Saturn is the ruler of your seventh house, which is your descendant. Seventh house represents our long-term committed relationships. That's basically denotes serious relationships, whereas the fifth house in astrology is more of dating romance. Uh, things being more on a casual side. Saturn ruling over your seventh house and being in the ninth house, making the trine can indicate that you may be getting engaged or married while Saturn is in Pisces indicating that you would become more serious with another person. Even if you're not getting married, the ninth house rules over our vision for the future. And Saturn represents commitment and promises. Pluto will be entering the sign of Aquarius, your eighth house, and the eighth house is connected to sex and emotional intimacy. And Pluto is a planet that is connected to sex and emotional intimacy as well which rules over your fifth house, which is Scorpio. So all of these houses are being activated and the fifth house is connected to dating and sex and romance. So this is indicating of a new relationship, maybe commencing around this time. However, if it doesn't happen around this time, do not despair, you guys. You have literally 20 years of this transit, okay? <laughs> so what does this mean? That... For those of you guys that have been struggling when we're talking about love and romance or struggling to maintain or to stabilize a connection or relationship, this transit is definitely going to solidify. For some of you guys, that means understanding or coming to the awareness that this is not going nowhere and you need to cut your losses, um, therefore making room for the person that is meant to be in your life to come in because throughout this transit, they will be definitely showing up. So for others of you, uh, this is an indication of love coming in. And this is a love that is going to be uh, very prominent in your life. Um, when this transit occurs, it could, you know, like I said, indicate soulmate connection. So this could be a lifetime partner, a person you end up getting married to, a person you end up making a life with. So beautiful energy there, Cancers. All right, let's see what you can expect for this month of January 2023. By the way, what are you guys doing for this New Year's Eve? Are you guys gathering with family, with friends? Comment below, let me know. I like to be nosy. We are celebrating with the family. Exciting times we love the holidays over here all right cancer sun moon rising venus for the month of january 2023 all right we have oh we have the devil two of swords eight of wands queen of cups page of wands and the high priestess Cancer, you know that what you've been doing up until now has not been working when we're talking about relationships or partnerships. The devil card denotes, you know, toxic behavior, a toxic cycle, and the two of swords is the refusal of that. You want to sit there and say, well, I don't understand why this relationship's not working. Well, the person that you were dealing with from the very beginning told you they didn't want a relationship. You didn't believe them. You were hopeful and you tried to hold on to that. Um, for others of you, you lied to yourself thinking that this was going to go somewhere when you clearly seen red flags all over this situation or this person. 
Queen of Wands, sorry, Queen of Cups. It is about really not allowing yourself to try to sit there. <coughs> Excuse me. Try to sit there and heal people. That's not your job. That's 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 not what relationships are. It's not you being the mother or being the father. These are grown ass people. They don't have their shit together. It's time to keep it pushing. But it's time for you to stop asking yourself why things don't work out when you clearly see signs and you choose to remain. This cycle needs to end, Cancer. So that you can fully release yourself from past attachments or people that leech off of you. This is in every aspect. This could be financial. This could be emotional. This could be literally people leeching off of you. It is about allowing yourself to be okay with letting go of those connections and learning to put yourself first and nurturing and caring for yourself. And once you're able to do that, you'll be able to sniff the snakes out right away and to stop allowing yourself to waste time on people that don't deserve your time. We need to end this cycle, Cancer, cycle of giving people too many chances. You know better. It's time to stop doubting your intuition, to start paying attention to that, Cancer. All right, let's see what... Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, please give us three cards for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Oh, well, okay. They gave me exactly three. So we have blossoming abundance. So abundance, opportunities. Unexpected blessings coming your way. The next card is caring connections. It is about paying attention to the connections, relationships, friendships even, um, that are reciprocated and understanding the ones that are not and drawing the line on those. Attachment. Again, I feel like for a lot of you holding on to a situation that hasn't been working out, you know, the more we try to hold on to something or the more we try to hold on to someone, it only facilitates the inevitable and it makes it happen quicker. So the more you try to hold on to someone tightly, the more they want to go. It's time. To hold on to yourself tightly, Cancer. To make yourself a priority. Stop sacrificing yourself. Like I said, the connections, the friendships, the partnerships, the relationships. Take inventory of that. Take inventory of the people that reciprocate your energy and the ones that don't. It's time to detach yourself from that because that's what's keeping you from progressing. That's what's keeping you from moving forward. That's what's keeping you from finding healthy relationships or healthy partnerships. All right, my lovelies. All right. I wish you guys the very best. I hope that this 2023 brings to you blessings, success, happiness, love, health. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to... Sorry if you guys hear someone blowing their nose. <laughs> All right, we're going to Leo now. 
All right, Leos. Love relationships have definitely been rough on you guys since 2020. Uh, that's when Saturn first entered Aquarius and then it went back into Capricorn and it's been in Aquarius since December 17th, 2020 till March the 7th, 2023, which is your seventh house, which makes it a very heavy and burdensome type of energy. Having Saturn in your seventh house is not an easy transit and it's not necessarily that Saturn doesn't like being in the seventh house. Uh, that actually, it actually does, but it gives a higher level of commitment. Remember, Saturn is commitment. It's the promise, the vows. But when it comes to relationships um, that we're forcing or holding on to, they can become extremely burdensome, difficult. The energy is extremely heavy when Saturn is in the seventh house. There is this energy of either you wanting commitment or your partner wanting the commitment. It could represent delays, hardships, as it is associated with karma. Um, the amazing news here is that Saturn is leaving your seventh house. That's happening on March. Uh, when that happens, you're definitely going to be feeling like a weight has been lifted, like you can breathe. You're feeling more of your more like yourself again. Some of you guys may be finishing up a divorce around this time or going through a separation during this time. Pluto moves and is entering into the sign of um, Aquarius, your seventh house, from March to June 2023. Many of you will be meeting your soulmate around this time the person that will be transforming your life. On January 3rd, 2023, Venus will be in Aquarius, your seventh house. Some of you may be meeting a new person. Um, on January 21st, you will also be having a new moon in Aquarius, um, your seventh house, and it will be conjunct Venus and Saturn. This is a definite indicator of getting into something more serious, becoming more exclusive, announcing publicly that you're dating, um, etc. A year that just keeps getting better and better for you guys as it progresses. Jupiter will be in Aries in your ninth house from December 20th, um, 2022 till May uh, 16, 2023. Um, Jupiter is going to be trining you. Even though it's in the ninth house, you're going to start feeling really, really good, experiencing blessings, abundance, good fortune, and opportunity. Remember, Jupiter is um, the bountiful planet. It is the planet that brings opportunity, expansion, growth, uh, blessings, sometimes even hitting blessings. So for some of you guys um, that have been experiencing difficulty or a bit of instabilization when we're talking about relationships, that's definitely not going to be um, the cause anymore. That's not going to be the situation anymore. You're definitely being able to embrace more of your energy. Um, and with these changes, uh, it is also bringing to you the opportunity to connect or start something much more stable uh, or finding the person that you can actually connect with and vibe with and see this connection or relationship take off. All right. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to what you can expect for January 2023. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. go we have the king of swords ten of cups queen of wands seven of cups five of wands and the seven of pentacles <coughs> i'm definitely seeing <coughs> your fifth and seventh house being highlighted here clearly um I feel that around these transits that are going to be happening for you in 2023, it's going to bring a connection to actually solidify. For those of you guys that have felt like you are a bit foreign when we're talking about relationships, right? You keep meeting people and you just don't vibe or you just don't feel 
that spark, that connection. That's definitely not going to be the case for 2023. I really see you guys going in the month of March all the way to June. Um, a lot of opportunities when we're talking about love and romance, a lot of not only opportunities, but choices. You have options here, Leo. I feel also that for some of you, you may be in between two people or you will get to the point of feeling like you are in between two people, not necessarily knew, uh, knowing exactly which one to choose. Now, what they're telling you here is more than anything, try to try the best you can to be patient when it comes to uh, giving yourself the opportunity to connect with people. Um, so when I say be patient, I mean in the aspect of though not everyone is perfect and we can um, see certain icks, right? Certain things that bother us about a person um, or that annoys us. Don't be very quick to dismiss because I feel that though um, you may have options and though for some of you guys, you may feel like you are really in between choosing two people. I feel that the one that makes you more easy, like the easier pick, is the one that is with less substance. Um, and they're showing me here that there is almost a, a habit of you doing this. So again, um, the one that may seem a little bit more difficult, uh, either to crack, to get to know, or to... maybe not as exciting, um, is the one that brings to you the most stability. So again, don't be very dismissive when we're talking about relationships or connecting with people and getting to know them. All right. All right, Leo. Let's see what Spirit's message is for you here for Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, please give us a message here. Give us three cards for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. Your first card here is security. That's exactly the vibe I was sensing when they were talking about um, the relationship, the connection um, that you may find yourself in or that you may be questioning, should I pick this one? Should I pick that one? And they're telling you, you want security. You don't want what's exciting at this point in your life, Leo. You want what is stable or what has the potential to become something stable. So again, it is about that security. It's about that uh, provider energy of its masculine. It is about that motherly uh, energy of it's a female. Um, so it's paying attention to that. It's it's very important and, and it, it's going to have a major impact in the success that you have when we're talking about relationships. Now, the next card here is forgiveness. It's letting go of the past. Stop holding on to the past. Um, I know that's easier said than done. Uh, sometimes people really put us through the trenches, put us through difficulties, really painful lessons. But it's time to let go of that. And it's time to embrace this new cycle in your life, Leo. It's time to embrace, you know, sometimes forgiving is not forgiving the person itself, but it's giving you the opportunity to release that attachment, that connection that still is there because there's still resentment or because there's still some type of feeling, whether it's good feeling or bad feeling, it's still an emotional attachment. So it's about letting go, not for their sake, but for the sake of you. Now, your next card here is Gateway. The opportunities to experience or to be open to experiencing new experiences, be more spontaneous, be more Leo, 
Be more passionate. Spontaneity is something that is going to take you very, very far into uh, 2023. Heal. If you give yourself the opportunity. All right, my lovelies. I want to wish you guys the very best for this 2023. May all the blessings be bestowed upon you. Now let's go to... Dun, 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 dun. Virgo. Okay. Virgos. Saturn is entering the sign of Pisces, your seventh house from March 2023 to February 2026. Saturn entering the seventh house for some of you that are already in a relationship and have been wanting to take it to the next level or not knowing uh, where you stand in a relationship. Saturn entering the seventh house can actually elevate the relationship and level of commitment. However, for others, especially indicate for those in an existing relationship that is, you know, difficult. Uh, sometimes it could predict distancing as an example, working abroad, having to travel away from your partner or being emotionally detached because one of you will be going through something um, that puts all that energy and effort towards that uh, towards that specific thing that they're doing that keeps the relationship a bit strained. But um, this is a, obviously a test, Saturn's energy here. Um, those of you that are already in a relationship, this is not to say that the relationship will not be able to survive. If it does, it actually strengthens considering the fact that Neptune has been in Pisces alone since 2018, prior to March 2023. It um, could have experience for some of you guys up until then. Uh, you could have been experiencing uh, unrequited love, sacrificing yourself in the name of love, or dealing with a partner that has abuse issues, addictions. Um, the higher vibration of Neptune being in your seventh house indicates from 2018 uh, till now, what you guys could have for the very first time experienced true love or deep and profound healing. If there has been confusion in the certain relationship or a lack of clarity, this can actually assist you. Jupiter will be entering the sign of Taurus in your ninth house. Jupiter is a very important planet or because the ruler of your seventh house, which is your descendant. Jupiter represents the long-term relationship, committed uh, partnership, soulmate, marriage, partner, etc. The ruler of the seventh house going into your ninth house may indicate that some of you may be getting married within this 12-month period. For others of you, you may be meeting your future significant other. With the help of this Jupiter in, uh, in, in a trine, you can meet this partner overseas um, they could be a foreigner, you could be traveling, or they can be traveling when you meet, or the meeting may take place where you're doing some type of adventure. You can meet in the education system as well, or anything that is connected to education. They could be spiritual or religious in nature. Pluto will be in Capricorn, your fifth house. Uh, some of you may be closing off a very difficult situationship. Uh, because this is also a trine <coughs> with Pluto. Um, some may be meeting your soulmate or meeting someone special. Venus will also be in Pisces in your seventh house from January 27th, which is great opportunities to meet new people and romantic encounters are highlighted uh, for 2023. Um, 2023 has many pivotal timelines astrologically for you Virgos when we speak about commitment and romance so make the best of it and if you are you know one of the ones that has been going through difficulties in a connection or relationship um, when this cycle going into 2023 starts to kick in um Whatever is falling, let it fall apart, Virgo. It's not for you. Make room 
for the person that is worthy of you because you will definitely be finding that person in 2023 all right my lovelies okay let's get into it let's see what you can expect for january 2023rd spray guides what are the messages here for january 2023rd for virgo sun moon rising venus virgo sun moon rising venus all right, here we go. So we have the Six of Swords, the Three of Swords, Four of Wands, Page of Swords, Ace of Cups, and the Knight of Pentacles. What you've been holding on to or what you've been trying to work out very hard, um, if at this point it just hasn't worked out, Virgo, it's time to let it go. It's hurting you more and it's keeping you from progress. It's keeping you from the stability um, the stability, the structure that you're desiring and that you're wanting, um, being able to release yourself from attachments that are no longer necessary in your life will only free you, uh, and guide you to your ultimate stability with the four of wands celebratory energy. This is what you've been seeking and wanting ace of cups, love coming in love that is love lasting long lasting, sorry, um, love that is healthy, love that you're able to build on, <coughs> build on a solid foundation. So again, let's not hold on to anything from the past anymore. Whatever is falling to the wayside, it's time to let it go to free yourself and give yourself the opportunity of really being happy and finding what you deserve. Virgo. All right, let's see what your final messages are here. Spirit Guides, Ancestors, Archangels. What are the messages here for Virgo? Messages here for Virgo. Give me three cards. For Virgos. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right, here we go. Your first card is solitude. Some of you guys, it's the need, the need to be single. The need to be alone, the need to find yourself. The need to cut all noise out and to be able to embrace and listen to yourself. Listen to your soul. The next card here is wisdom. Through finding yourself, you find the knowledge, the wisdom, the knowing, the understanding. Security. Though sometimes it may be scary to be on our own, it's necessary because the reason why a lot of people don't like to be alone, have you ever met people that just jump from one relationship to another? The reason for that is because when you are alone, you are alone with your thoughts. And if your thoughts are not good, positive they can become so loud so it's better to hush them by being around other people or noise but those loud thoughts sometimes are a way to connect or understand what's missing <coughs> in us. Through being able to find peace and quiet, you're able to go within. And by going within, you're able to understand your nature, why we do the things we do. 
why we need the things we need. And through that wisdom, through that understanding, you come out of it with a deeper understanding of yourself, of your nature. Therefore, making the possibility of connecting with someone and learning healthy love and being able to give healthy love is the equivalent to our success. All right, Virgo, I want to wish you guys the very best for 2023. And let's move along. Now we're going to Libra. All right, Libra. Jupiter will be in Aries. It's been there since December 16th, all the way to May 2023. As we start off the year, Jupiter will be in your seventh house. The seventh house, as you know, speaks about romance, commitments, partnerships, and marriage. Jupiter, being the planet of luck, blessings, abundance, growth, good fortune, and prosperity. This speaks about great opportunities in the romantic sector for you. For those of you guys that are single, this can indicate meeting your life partner, a person who will take things to the next level. For those of you guys that are already in existing love relationships, it is taking it to the next level of commitment, and this can rather pick up very quickly. Jupiter being in Aries, a fire energy, things will happen very quickly from the July 17th. The North Node in Aries, your seventh house, while the south node in Libra will be in your first house for the 18th months all the way to January 2025. So for those of you guys that are in this first three months of the year, haven't met someone, don't stress about it. This is an 18th month transit. <coughs> With the north node entering your seventh house, this can indicate a new romantic relationship uh, evolving. And it will evolve very quickly. This could be a completely different type of person that you would normally not go for. That is because the North Node is things which are foreign to us, exciting, different, has a very ambitious and exploratory energy. It's kind of a combination between Mars and Uranus. Things can start off very passionately, very heavy, because it's rather quick and it's energy. Um... It could be a situation where you start casually dating someone and starts rushing into steps that you would usually take a while in a relationship. Like you could start traveling with them and end up moving in with each other or start a family right away. The nature of the type of people that you're used to dating will definitely change because of this particular transit that's happening on March 23rd. We also have Pluto and Aquarius, your fifth house. The fifth house is all about romance, dating, sex. Uh, with Pluto being here in your fifth house, this indicates a new cycle that you're starting. And this cycle will be experienced within the next 20 years. So the Libras who will be affected the most in 2023 are those between zero and one degrees. If you're a Libra rising or Libra moon, uh, once this transit happens, this could indicate meeting your soulmate, someone who you have a past life connection with, someone who you have a very deep connection with. You also may be experiencing Venus and Aquarius in your fifth house because Venus is your ruler. This is where you will be focusing and love and romance is exactly that house. So um also experiencing a new moon in your fifth house of Aquarius, a new cycle, a new beginning. Um, so there is a lot of highlights here for you guys to start a partnership that is a long lasting partnership. It could signify the person you're dating, uh, wanting to take things to a higher level of commitment. Venus and Saturn will be 23 degrees and 24 degrees Aquarius respectively. A time of Saturn and Venus conjunction in a new moon. So we have the element of Venus, love, relationships, and Saturn, the planet of commitments. So that is definitely an exciting new moon to experience for you Libras out there. 
So again, love is definitely in the air for you guys. It is definitely in the cards for you. Um, for those of you guys that have been having a bit of difficulty in your prospective relationships at this point in time, uh, there may be a deepening of this connection for the coming months. All right, my lovelies, let's get into your reading. Let's see what you can expect for January 2023. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of January 2023. All right, here we go. We have the Knight of Wands. Nine of Wands, the Judgment, Hill of Fortune, Nine of Swords, and the Hierophant. So it is about no longer fretting about the past. There is no point in crying over spilt milk, Libra. It's time to really make the decision um, that this is your life. That this is your life and that you're going to direct the boat and not allow others to direct that boat for you or to steer the boat for you. Um, it is about releasing yourself from responsibilities or feeling like you have to make choices based on other people um, instead of yourself and then having to deal with that regret. Uh, 2023 is all about making decisions and owning them. Uh, making decisions of what is best for you. Taking care and making yourself a priority is definitely something that is being highlighted here. You will soon come to understand that though you put so much importance in what other people think or see or how they view you uh, or the decisions that you've made have been primarily made not for yourself, but what is best for other people or those around you, you're gonna quick to you're gonna be quick to understand the moment you start making decisions for yourself that it doesn't greatly impact those around you. Um, if anything, you're gonna realize that you'd no longer have to sacrifice yourself because the world continues to be as it is, whether you make decisions for yourself or for others. So it's time you learn to put yourself first. All right, Libra. And I know this is difficult for you guys, but it's necessary to understand this. All right, my lovelies. Let's see what your oracle messages are here. Spirit Guides, Ancestors, Archangels. Please give us three cards for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know at this point in time? Okay, we have too many. I'm going to put them back. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. Your first card here is third chakra, Archangel Shamuel. Listening to your intuition, Libra. Listening to your intuition, paying attention to your gut feelings is going to be very crucial, very important for you in 2023. If it doesn't feel right, don't do it. And don't doubt that feeling either. Your next card here is the thinking man. Someone's thinking of you. I feel like someone from a distance. For some of you guys, you may be hearing from someone that is at a distance or perhaps that you have not had communication with. I see them really pacing. I feel like this person has been wanting to reach out for quite a while. There's some type of nervousness to this wanting to reach out. Maybe you were waiting on them to reach out. Maybe they waited a little too long and now they're scared that perhaps you may reject them or perhaps you may ignore them. But there is true intentions here of wanting to make communication happen. And the next card is Blossoming Abundance. Opportunities, like I said, Jupiter is the planet of blessings. 
there's definitely a financial increase here that is going to be happening for you Libras out there. For some of you guys, you may be getting a lot of like fertile ideas, ideas about making money, ideas about taking chances. Definitely do it. Don't sit there and procrastinate, Libra. Make it happen. That's definitely going to be bringing to you guys more opportunities for finances. All right, my lovelies. I want to wish you guys the very best. Now let's go to... Scorpio. <clears throat> All right, Scorpios. 2023 will definitely be a very lucky year when we're talking about your love life and romance. Let's start with Jupiter entering, entering ter, uh, Taurus, which will occur on the 16th of May, 2023. Jupiter enters your Taurus house once every 12 years the most positive and key indicator of love blossoming. Jupiter will be in Taurus, like I said, from the 16th of May, 2023 to the 24th of May, 2024, which is your seventh house. We also got the ruler of your fifth house being in the seventh house. Great time for you and romance for those of you guys that are single and looking. This can indicate getting into a relationship which is of a more serious nature. While the fifth house rules over dating in casual relationships, the seventh house is where commitments take place, partnerships are made. With Jupiter being in your seventh house, taking a situation where you're just seeing it as someone or something casual, uh, and then taking it to a higher level of commitment, becoming exclusive, officially announcing for those of you guys already in a relationship, this just makes the deepening of the connection through a higher level, like getting engaged or getting married. Within this 12-month period of time, the North Node will still be in Taurus, your seventh house, and going into 2023, which is a strong indicator of, of a relationship taking off. So for a lot of you guys, it's the solidifying of a relationship, while for others, it's starting a new relationship that is going to be affecting you. Uh, from now all the way to 20, uh, 2025. So um, serious monogamous relationships is definitely the theme for you guys for 2023. All right, my lovelies, let's see what you can expect for this month of January 2023. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right, here we go. We have the Eight of Wands, quick, fast movement towards growth. The Empress here, abundance, opportunities, the Hermit. <clears throat> wow, Justice, Two of Wands, and the Moon. Definitely a cycle of abundance, a cycle of growth. I see you guys internalizing um really counting your blessings for some of you guys feeling or understanding the growth that you've experienced all 2023 <coughs> sorry all 2022 going into 2023 uh for others of you it is really cutting cutting the 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 connections that have been draining you and I feel like for a lot of you guys you have been going through this for quite a while we've been seeing this in the readings where you're finally finding the balance Scorpio the balance of reciprocation the balance of appreciation the balance of gratefulness and those that bring that to your life and those that take it away you're pulling away from that you're becoming more seclusive or more exclusive I should say when it comes to your energy and when it comes to sharing your energy, um, th there is this, this sense of understanding that it's about my peace of mind. It is about my security. It is about my happiness. 
and you making that a priority. And in that, in that, you're also bringing people that are around you that are positive, um, kind of building, helping build each other up. And that is a beautiful energy to experience here. So again, it is about growth. I feel that for a lot of you guys, a lot of self-growth has happened and will continue uh, for 2023 with boundaries, with, like I said, you becoming exclusive and being very mindful of the people you choose to be around and the people that you choose to have around. So beautiful energy here for you, Scorpios. Continue on that path, my dears, because trust me, nothing is better than peace of mind. All right, spirit guides, ancestors, archangels, what are the messages you want to communicate to Scorpio at this point in time? Give me three oracle cards for Scorpios. <coughs> sun, moon, rising, Venus. Scorpio, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Sorry, you guys, if you guys hear if people in the background annoying us family members <laughs> if you guys are hearing me i love you guys <laughs> all right scorpio sun moon rising venus here we go all right scorpio first card that we have here is new love new love coming in for those of you guys that are single like i said for those of you guys that are in an existing relationship it is the deepening of that connection your next card here is let go of control issues. Allows the situation to unfold naturally. Let go of control issues, Scorpio, for 2023. Even when it comes to relationships. Try the best you can to heal that part of you. That needs to be in control or that needs to feel like you always have the upper hand. Heal that part. Because a healthy relationship is trusting each other. And though that may not come easy to you, we all know that. It doesn't mean that you're not able to heal. And to trust freely. Easier said than done. I know. Now the next card here is make the effort. Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. Beautiful energy, you guys. This also indicates to me children. For some of you guys, a new life. Starting a family. For others of you, expanding the family. Being on the same page with your partner. Beautiful energy, you guys. All right, my lovelies. I want to wish you guys the very best for 2023. Now let's go to Sagittarius. Sagittarius. Okay. Sagittarius, you may still be dealing with some type of confusion regarding a connection or relationship. And that is because Mars will start to be retrograding in Gemini as the year commences. But things will start to clear up and become a lot less confusing. The reason why this is currently affecting you is because Mars is the ruling of your fifth house. And the fifth house is connected to your love and romance and dating. And it is in retrograde in your seventh house, which represents partnerships, commitments. For those of you guys that are in a relationship already, Mars being retrograde in the seventh house can indicate on one level that you're trying to work through some issues that have occurred in your relationship or in your marriage, while others of you may be currently going through the process of separation around this period of time, while others of you may be... Uh, some of you guys reuniting with exes were, or having conversations with someone 
who you've been in a relationship with or interested in. Mars being retrograde indicates a certain situation coming back to the forefront. This energy is bringing stuff from the past, <coughs> etc. Now, for those of you guys that are single, this Mars retrograde can be having you uh, internalize certain behaviors from past relationships as well as acknowledging self sabotaging behaviors and in retrospect um, introspective period that you're going into uh, you may realize what it is that you want and don't want in relationships now keep in mind jupiter spent about five months being in aries from the 10th of may to the end of october 2022 then it went back into Pisces, but from the 20th of December, 2022, it will remain there till May, 2023. Jupiter will be back in Aries. This is a great time for you, Sagittarius, because Jupiter is your ruling planet. This indicates that wherever Jupiter goes, this is you and what you're going to be doing. So with your chart ruler being in your fifth house, which is connected to love and dating and romance, this can see you entering into a new relationship or you could just be having more fun now that Saturn will be going into Pisces, your fourth house from March 23 all the way to February 2026. This indicates that Saturn will be squaring you as a Sagittarius, Sun, Moon or rising. Saturn has not been in Pisces for 30 years now. Square energy can pose some kind of challenge and hardship with this being in your fourth house. For some of you, this can indicate settling down, planting roots with another person, feeling like you have more security. For some of you, even starting a new family or expanding a family. So beautiful energy here, Sagittarius. A lot of expansion, a lot of growth. Make it happen, you guys. This is your ruling planet. All right. Let's see what you can expect for January 2023. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What can you expect for January 2023? Okay, here we go. Ace of Wands. Passion, Desire, New Beginnings. Queen of Swords. Looking forward towards the future. Thinking or being inspired about taking action. Death card, rebirth, complete transformation. You go from chasing passions and desires to looking towards the future or looking with purpose, taking action that is going to completely transform your life. Ace of Swords, new beginnings. You guys have definitely new beginnings. Enlightenment, wisdom, maturity. The Knight of Swords here, running towards a desire, running towards achievement. So I see you guys thinking more of the future. Putting into perspective everything you have experienced, everything you have gone through, the lessons. Really embracing this new beginning for you guys. You have more clarity of mind. You're going towards the things that you want and you're being unapologetic about it, whether it's a relationship whether it's settling, stabilizing, whether it's making things happen. It is no longer procrastination, but action in movement or movement in action. Beautiful energy here, Sagittarius. Beautiful energy to start the new year as well. All right, my lovelies, let's see. Here we go. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, please give us three oracle cards to represent the messages that you have here for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. 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 All right. Here we go. All right, finances and career. Financial issues are a factor in your love life right now. I feel like for some of you guys, it is the stabilizing of your finances, whereas that's the reason you're going to feel like you're more secure or you're able to uh, really think of the future and think of, you know, 
what you want as far as relationships and partnerships go. And for others of you being ready to settle down because you feel secure. Your next card here is reconciliation. Some, someone from your past is returning to your life. I feel that for some of you guys, <coughs> this could be you revisiting a situation from the past, a connection, uh, someone perhaps where you were interested in and things didn't move forward or they didn't go anywhere or almost feels like life pulled you guys towards different directions. There is a revisiting of that situation and walking away. Walking away is more of the energy of, you know, just like when we start something new, we need to understand that there are certain cycles that we need to end as well before being able to fully embrace new beginnings. So I feel like if you've been holding on to a relationship or a connection that just hasn't been working out for you for quite a while, around this time, you may be knowing exactly what it is that you want and you deciding you're not wasting your time anymore. Your time is precious. The clock is ticking. All right, my lovelies. I want to wish you guys the very best going into 2023. I hope you guys have blessings in every single aspect of your life. Now let's go to Capricorn. My Cappies. You Capricorns are going to be experiencing a lot of fertile romantic energy you're going to be experiencing around 2023. North Node will still be in Taurus, which is your fifth house. It has been there since January 18th, 2022, all the way till the 17th of July, 2023. Because the North Node will bring something new to the house that it transits, the North Node has been in Taurus in your fifth house for um, many of you within this 18th month period. You have experienced new romantic relationships and new development in your existing relationship. For those of you guys that nothing has happened as of yet, don't worry. We still have another seven months of this transit. This could indicate for some of you, you will be experiencing dating outside of your comfort zone or not your usual type. Because you're becoming more adventurous in regards to the people you date and the way you access dating. For some of you guys, especially as Capricorns, you may have had traditional ways of meeting and dating people in the past. You will become more experimental, perhaps more open-minded to dating online. With Jupiter entering the sign of Taurus, <clears throat> Jupiter, the planet that brings blessings to the house it, transit, it transit, uh, transits in, um, <coughs> um, it enters every 12 years in Taurus. This indicates more dating opportunities uh, that have more optimism and confidence when it comes to your romantic life. More opportunities for you guys to date and options. Also something to maintain, uh, to mention, a Jupiter being in your that Jupiter being in your fifth house can also indicate and predict pregnancy uh, or starting a family. So if you're not trying to do all of that, be careful, you guys, because you're very fertile right now. Keep in mind there is an overlap. We have Jupiter entering Taurus as well as the North Node being in Taurus. Major indicator of new relationships taking off, meeting someone new, or an existing relationship taking it to the next level. And at an ac accelerated motion, I must say, because the North Node has a very spontaneous, exciting um, energy, adventurous energy, and a very extremely sexual energy. And Jupiter expands whatever it touches. Also to mention, Pluto will be in Capricorn for nine months, which is your first house. It activates the first and seventh house axis, so many of you Capricorns will be going through some sort of awakening when it comes to relationships and whatever you let the uh, concept of relationships control you. Or maybe you have experience being controlled by another person. Pluto will be in Aquarius, your second house from March 
all the way till June 2023. You may be experiencing your feeling like weight has been lifted, a burden or the pressure of a burden relationship in regards to partnerships. This will be a glimpse of what you can expect for 2024. When Pluto re-enters the sign of Aquarius, we have a full moon in Cancer at 16 degrees, your seventh house, January 6, 2023. With Uranus, um, with Uranus and Taurus at 15 degrees, so it's nearly an exact sextile. This full moon is opposite Mercury and Capricorn. And then we go, and then we got the Sun, Mercury, and Capricorn sextiling Uranus. Uh, Mercury's information, you guys. Uranus represents divine knowledge, download of information, that aha moment. Um, and because of the full moon energy situation rising to its peak, uh, opposite Mercury, that is in retrograde for some of you, maybe getting back with an X or a much needed closure from an ex uh, is finally coming to that culmination. We also got Venus and Taurus in your fifth house from March all the way to April 11th. We got the ruler of the fifth house in the fifth house being in the planet of relationship, or sorry, in the sign of relationships and love. Uh, that is perfect timing for dating or romance. This could indicate having major dating opportunities where you meet someone special during this time frame. Now, from May all the way to June 2023, Venus will go into Cancer, your seventh house, the ruler of your fifth house, going into your seventh house and the house of partnerships, commitments. So your fifth house and seventh house are being activated by the same transit, which is amazing for relationships to materialize here. Um, we will also be experiencing a new moon in Taurus at 28 degrees in your fifth house on the 19th of May, uh, which is a very auspicious time because it's an exciting new moon. We will have Jupiter, the North Node, Mercury, Uranus, the Moon, and the Sun all in the sign of Taurus that has basically five uh, planets. Auspicious time that predicts exciting excitement, new beginnings, and the solification of romantic connections and relationships. So very exciting time there for you guys, Capricorn. All right, my lovelies. Now let's get into your messages for January 2023. What are the messages for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of January 2023? Here we go. We have the Four of Pentacles. The Six of Swords, the Queen of Cups, Five of Pentacles, the Strength card, and the Three of Cups. The difficulty, you're finding difficulty in opening up. You're finally going into this new cycle in your life, Capricorn, being more open, um, allowing yourself to connect or allowing others to connect with you. This has been a difficult uh, learning and healing cycle for you guys and you're finally coming out of it um, restored and, and when I say restored I see you guys in your power I see you guys being able to come together um, and celebrate and begin the new year with loved ones and those that mean the world to you uh, for some of you guys the loss of connections and friendships and even relationships is something that uh, was definitely difficult in 2022 for you but i feel like you are more in power now you are more like i said healed and you're coming out of this cycle of building is what i'm hearing building of friendships strengthening uh relationships your finances your career it's been you've been on building mode for quite a while and you're finally releasing yourself from that heavy burden and being able to be more present, more aware. Keep your heart chakra open, Capricorn. 
That's going to be very important for you guys in 2023. If you feel like you have it blocked, do some meditation. Get yourself some rose quartz, spiritual baths. All right, my lovelies. All right. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, give us three cards to represent the messages you want to communicate to Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus at this point in time. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, Capricorn, we have illumination, being able to see things from a different perspective, being able to see clearly. I feel for a lot of you guys, there are a lot of revelations that are still going to be unfolding for you. Clarity about a situation. Being able to see clearly and concisely what it is that you want at this point in time and going after it or making it happen. Your next card, power. Knowing exactly what it is that you want, having a clear picture of what it is that you want, there's power in that because you're driving your your chariot with the bare force of your will. Powerful energy here. Illumination. Being able to see clearly is power. It's not about worrying about the present at this point in time or what's happening right now. It is about having the clear vision of what it is, where you want to go. There's power in that. Freedom. Being illuminated and understanding or knowing what it is that you want will give you the power to manifest it, to will it into existence through your bare will. That will give you the freedom. It's time you start living for yourself, Capricorn. Beautiful energy, you guys. All right, my lovelies. I wish you guys the very best for this 2023. Now let's move on to <coughs> Aquarius. All right, Aquarius. Mars will be in retrograde in Gemini, 25 degrees in your fifth house. This could be a continuation of something that started at the beginning of October when Mars first went retrograde. If you've been experiencing some type of discord or disconnection from your romantic relationship, you'll get peace and clarity regarding this connection as we move along in the beginning of 2023. On March 7th, Saturn will go into Pisces, your second house. Now Saturn has been sitting in your first house since 2020. Major burdens or feelings of stress when it comes to relationships. But now that Saturn is going into Pisces, the pressure is coming off. Situations surrounding relationships. On January 21st, 2023, we will have a new moon in Aquarius, your first house. We also have Venus being conjunct Saturn in Aquarius. So no matter what degrees you are as an Aquarius, sun, moon, or rising, this could indicate that you're going into this new chapter of your life. With respect to a romantic connection for some, may indicate that you're going into a new relationship, especially because we have Venus conjunct Saturn, essentially indicating a solidification of a connection or some type of higher level of commitment. 
And with Venus ruling over your fourth house, for some of you, this could be uh, deciding, taking it to the next level, getting into a partnership, buying property or moving, uh, moving in, establishing solid foundations in respect to starting a family. Now, the thing here with the new moon um, that is going to be squaring Uranus at 14 degrees in the sign of Taurus. There's an element of unexpected um, unexpectancy, especially as Uranus is the uh, planet that rules Aquarius or the other planet that rules Aquarius. There could be something here about timing. Uh, could be an element of one of you feeling more ready than the other, um, although both of you are on the same page about what direction you want the relationship to go. On February the 5th, we have a full moon in Leo at 16 degrees in your seventh house. Some of you guys could uh, be operating matters going into <coughs> uh, or coming up for you uh, in regards to getting pregnant. Uh, this full moon will be squaring Uranus. So there is an element of un unpredictability. Like I said, you could you couldn't see it coming. Almost the energy of one <clears throat> one or the other surprising the other this romantic relationship and keep in mind some of you guys um, that have been in a relationship and it's been rocky uh, it hasn't been working out this could be the final straw that broke the camel's back you guys uh, come March the 7th Saturn is leaving Aquarius re uh, removing that pressure off of you and things will begin to get better as the year progresses on the 23rd of March, Pluto will be going into Aquarius, your first house, which means the ruler of your 10th house uh, is moving into your first house and see you having a total epiphany when it comes to what you want your life to look like. Not just relationship-wise, uh, but this is really groundbreaking energy for you. Uh, if relationships have been difficult in the past, uh, and you see or you've seen yourself overcoming those karmic cycles now that Saturn will be out of your first house feeling ready and open to love again, uh, which is what Pluto essentially represents. On the 16th of May, Jupiter will be entering the sign of Taurus fourth house this spring. Uh, so much abundance, growth, blessings, good fortune to your home life and into your family life during this 12 month period for some of you you may be traveling with your significant other as well so a lot of growth a lot of expansion here for you guys uh, aquarius now let's get into your monthly let's see what you can expect for january 2023 if you guys like these videos like comment share um Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. All right, here we go. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, January 2023. All right, here we go. We have the Ten of Wands, the Fool, Seven of Wands, King of Cups, Four of Cups, and the Nine of Cups. <coughs> Aquarius, it is about shaking up the routine. It is about changing routine. It is about being open to being more spontaneous, not being stuck in the mud. It's time to really elevate yourself. You know, boredom is something that could really strain our energy and keep it, keep it stuck, keep it from moving and flowing. Um, what I'm hearing here is take chances in 2023. Be more spontaneous. Be more open-minded. Don't be so judgmental. Open your heart space. It's time. I see wish fulfillment happening, but only through being spontaneous or only through taking chances. So 2023, if anything, take chances, be more spontaneous. Do things that you wouldn't normally do, Aquarius. That's where 
the opportunities, the success, the growth and evolving energy is going to happen. But remember, it's up to you. So take action in moving forward. All right, my lovelies. Let's see what your final messages are here. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, what are the messages here for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Please give them three oracle cards that represent the messages you want to communicate with them at this point in time. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay. All right, Aquarius, your first card here is Gateway. Being spontaneous, being the rebel that you are, I feel like for a lot of you guys, there's been complacency. There's been routine or boredom. It's time to shake shit up. It's time to move the energy. Stop being stagnant. Your next card is Simplicity. Make life much more difficult. When we, it's kind of like that saying, right? Life is complicated enough and we humans have a tendency of making it more difficult by holding on to people that are toxic, holding on to situations that we feel we could turn around, but they just have not turned around. Truth of the matter is if you learn to see things from a very simplistic way, this person is like this, like this, like this. I am like this, like this, like this. It's not going to work out because or unless I change this and this about myself. But no, we hope that the other person changes instead of us. And if you're the one that's doing all the changes, then it's still not going to work out. It takes two people to, to make it work. So make your life simple. Take things for what they are. And stop taking things so personal, Aquarius. Your next card, Solitude. I feel like for some of you guys, you need to get out of this energy. And you need to get out of this energy like yesterday. Stop being on hermit mode. Cleanse your energy, Aquarius. Cleanse your energy. Purge yourself from negative energy now for those that are extremely social purge your friend group there are a few there that are extremely negative and they are affecting your energy and you're not paying attention All right, my lovelies. I hope this 2023 is everything you ever wished for. I wish you guys the very best. Last but not least, we are going to Pisces. All right, Pisces, on the 20th of February, we will have a new moon in your sign of Pisces first house at one degrees. What's interesting about this particular new moon um, we're also going to be having Neptune and Venus conjunct in Pisces as well, where was really pulling in all the degrees of Pisces, a new moon that activates your first and seventh house axis represents starting a new chapter in your life with a romantic connection. So if you're already in a romantic relationship, this could indicate that you and your significant other are making some very important decisions about the direction you want this relationship to go in. For others, it could be making the conscious decision of uncoupling. Being aware that it's best you go that way and it's best I go my way type of scenario. On March the 7th, we will have a full moon in Virgo at 16 degrees. This is the same day as Saturn changes signs and goes into Pisces, your first house. Firstly, Saturn hasn't been in the sign of Pisces for 29 years. 
the good news is that Saturn going into Pisces when it comes to relationships, it can actually solidify the relationship or it can take things to the next level because Saturn represents vows, commitment, promises. Having the higher level of commitment with Neptune being in Pisces since 2018, it could have been some intense confusion about romantic relationships. Um, for some of you guys could have been experiencing uh, regarding either a romantic relationship that in your life or an ex from the past um, that could have been, was in type of situation of unrequited love, a person being emotionally unavailable or simply not knowing where you stand with this person. So Saturn entering Pisces and being here for three years till February 2026 can indicate that there is an ability to move this relationship to a higher level of commitment and move forward and finally make that happen. It's like uh, Saturn is stepping in and helping you take this relationship to the next level. Of course, keep in mind the other side of the coin um, would be that you and your partner are deciding to part ways. Saturn being there, it could indicate some type of delay as an example if your relationship has been on the rocks or it has, hasn't has been working and you're trying for dear life to hold on to that, um, it's delaying what or holding back um, what is inevitable. And around this time frame, it is finally coming to that culmination. On the March, or sorry, on the 7th of March, we also have a full moon in Virgo at 16 degrees in your 7th house which is a cancer degree. It will be making a trine to Uranus. This is a sudden download of information, divine inspiration about a romantic connection, being able to move a relationship forward in a way that is quite unexpected. And Saturn is like, yes, let's make that happen. Let's ground this into reality. But again, the other side of the coin could be that you're realizing this connection has come to an end that there is nothing else that can be done from for it and that you're making the rational decision of ending the relationship and there is a sudden release of burdensome energy almost freeing and liberating especially for those of you guys that have been holding on to a relationship where the burden and the stress comes from uh, the partner not trying or the partner not doing enough this is definitely setting the tone um, for the culmination for this cycle to finally come to its conclusion. So with that being said, let's look into your January 2023 Pisces Sun Moon Rising Venus. What is unfolding for Pisces Sun Moon Rising Venus January 2023? All righty. Like I was telling you guys, if you guys are interested in any of the new year products that we have, definitely click the description link below. You'll be able to find our online store there so you guys can purchase any of these um, things that we prepared for you guys, uh, whether it's the gamblers, uh, mojo bags, the money mojo bags, uh, the wards, um, or the new year bundle. Uh, you'll be able to find all of that on there. All right, my lovelies, here we go, Pisces. We're starting off here with the star card, the queen of pentacles, the ten of swords, the six of wands, the hierophant, and the two of pentacles. Making that difficult decisions, decisions that are really setting the tone for this new year for you guys. The star card is being illuminated or being guided uh, to see things from a more clear perspective. It's about listening to you and your desires and what you want at this point and making the rational decisions. For some of you, the rational but difficult decision to walk away from what's no longer serving you. But this is amazing energy, you guys, because with these ending cycles, you are also embracing the Six of Wands, which is victory, which is success success through the hierophant which is success through finding releasing something old to be able to embrace something new that is going to bring to you 
the ultimate desire or the ultimate manifestation of what you've been wanting and hoping and wishing for. It is about not settling and knowing exactly what it is that you want and being daring enough, being courageous enough to let go of what's holding you back to be able to fight for and get and receive what you deserve. Two of Pentacles is a bit hesitant energy. Nonetheless, you're being guided. You're being pushed. It's time for you to stand up for yourself, Pisces, to know your worth, to not settle for anything less than what you deserve and less than what you want. Don't settle. This Make this 2023 your year. Decide now what it is that you want, what areas in your life you want to succeed. What is it that you're trying to manifest? What type of life you want? Decide now. Have a clear perspective on that, a clear, crystallized version of what it is that you want. And keep it moving. Don't settle. All right, my lovelies. All right. Now let's get into your final messages here, Pisces. Spirit guides, ancestors, archangels. Please give us the final messages here for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What are the final messages for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Oh, we've got cards flipping over. Okay, too many, so we're going to put them back. <clears throat> this one flipped. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, Pisces. Here we go. Your first card, freedom. Release yourself from anything that is keeping you from progress. Release yourself from anything that is keeping you from finding what it is that you deserve. Learn to fly free, Pisces. Then you'll find your happiness. Then you will have your wish fulfillment. Then you will be able to embrace your ultimate heart's desire. Illumination. 2023 Pisces, don't be scared to be alone. Even if it means being alone to find yourself. Because through yourself, will you be able to find the happiness that you crave and desire? That is the wisdom, the understanding, the knowledge that you will gain. All right, my lovelies. All right, I want to wish every single one of you guys the very best that this year has to offer. 2023, may all the blessings of health, prosperity, success, love, abundance, be bestowed upon every single one of you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. If you do, definitely like, share, subscribe, and I will see you guys next year. Happy New Year, you guys. Until then, bye-bye.